All right, what's up, Guan? Bonjour, Famille. It's your boy, Bump Jonas, representing for Sprinkle Some Salt Dot Podcast. And I am here with... Zajic, what's the deal? What's happening, y'all? What's happening? Your man is representing for KC. So let's jump in real quick. Uh, I know you kind of like in between sessions of doing your thing, so I don't want to keep you for too long. But uh, first of all, appreciate you tapping in and sitting down with me, man. Yes, sir. Um, so how long you been making music for now? Shit. Uh, since I was first time performing, I was in fifth grade. So uh, just turned 26. So. I oh, don't know. That's a long time. Yeah, you putting the numbers yeah, out there, putting y'all. In, hey, putting that work in. in. Yes, so first time you performed was in fifth grade. So was that like a talent, talent show? show? Yeah, yeah was, talent yeah. show. Yeah. Would you? Would you? Would you do? Uh, we did. Uh, me and uh Denver, uh, one of my first uh first friends, we did uh our own. We wrote. I forget what it was called, but uh, yeah, it was uh. Our, our song. So yeah. y'all did, you did an original joint? Yeah. Oh, fifth shit. grade. Was you rapping or singing? Rapping. So you, okay. So Nobody you was, recorded it though, or maybe, I don't know. I've never seen that footage, bro. I, I wish someone. Do you remember any of the bars? No. I think, I think we were wearing red though. Okay. We were okay. wearing red, like red shirts and like we were all like, you did you, know, did you, so they came color in like coordinated. A, yeah, they came in like fully decked out. Yeah, uniform, ready yeah. To go. That's hard. So, yeah, yeah. All right, so that tells me then, like you, you've been dedicated to this for a minute. Then, um, like, yeah. so what? What was it? What What happened that that bit bit you? Like, what was the bug? What What was the trigger? Um, for real, like just trying to uh, be like my older brother and a uh, big cousin, I guess, like trying to like i seen what they did and it was just like it was just a popular thing to do in a sense like before i even knew myself you know uh sports was always there too but i always had a love for music because of uh them so i kind of like strive to be uh you know to be, be like them in a sense you know in involved really, yeah, yeah okay yeah. all right so what's your i want to talk a, a little bit about your process but you you have a a lot of different <clears throat> excuse me aspects or hats that you wear for your career like you're damn near self-sufficient so talk to us a little bit about what all you do when it comes to your career like you're self-built empire so how many hats are you wearing yeah bro i just hustle bro and it's overwhelming at times but uh as i get older i understand i'm uh i'm more open to taking advice and uh taking on teamwork if it's uh if it's you know if it's meant to be but i'm i got my hand in a lot of different bags and it's just like you know wherever as long as it contributes to you know what i'm trying to do and uh you know in uh in a in a way can be can make me money in the long run or make me money now or you know whatever i'm with it so as long as it ain't no you know it's has to represent me you mm. know so uh so I got, you know, it's just a day by day grind, bro. Just uh there's bumps in the road always, but you just keep going, bro, and that's just, my recipe for real. Just roll with it, Yeah, right? just roll with so it, bro. New job comes up, oh, let me figure it out and deal with it. Yeah, keep going. you know what I'm saying? You just gotta do sometimes you gotta do some things that you don't want to to get where you need to go. And uh I feel like I'm a master in like adapting. Mm, you know, like okay. I'm very uh I'm very good like at at, at uh getting through shit, you know, in a sense. How do you approach learning something new when it comes to, you know, like, you know, I've seen you work the camera. I've seen you uh, um, heat press some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, are, are you are you mixing your own joints yet and shit, man? Like I've tried, bro. It's just really about applying myself, and I have a problem, as I like I said, as I'm getting older, I'm being, being more patient. I'm learning mm -hmm. to be more patient. I never was growing up, and it's just about, learning myself and applying myself and trying to reach that full potential. But, um, it's just about, you know, uh, you know, for real patience and I'm still, I'm still have problems with that. So, you know, but I'm learning, bro. It's, it's all about learning and it's, uh, you know, that's what it is. Really. So when you talk about patience and, and you're, you're probably in what project number 13 or 14, I think my next one is, uh, 18. 18? Yeah. Yo. Yo. Been getting, a long ways, getting bro. Getting up there. Isn't that a Kobe number somewhere? 18? Mm, mm, mm There's no reference? Okay. All right. I'm not a Kobe no, expert, no so I can't. Okay. It's just, uh, 
I thought I thought that's a significant number somewhere, but eight eight was Kobe. Eight, though. that's what it. Okay, eight and twenty four. My bad. Mm-hmm. I don't want to disrespect the Kobe yites <laughs> out there, the Kobe fans. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so I was asking uh, Connor this before, and it's something I think I'm going to ask a lot of artists and creatives because we all are artists and we're sensitive about our shit, right? So, how do you deal with critique and and feedback? If I feel it can help me or if I feel it's honest or if I feel like it's coming from a good place, I'll take it. You know, uh, you know, a lot of the times though, you know, coming up, just how I came up, bro, people will hate on you just because maybe they see you doing it and they're not doing it. Or maybe they think they got it more than you, but they ain't applying themselves. So I've ran into those situations so many times, but I, I mean, I'm willing to take advance I'm, or I'm willing to take advice uh, and I'm willing to like learn off of other people's experiences or whatever. But it's just got to it's got to be coming from a good place. I, yeah. I, I don't you know, if somebody's bullshitting me, I call them out before I even, you know, let them go on, you know. So, you know, and you could probably tell. Yeah. People, bro, quick, people you know be on saying? bullshit and people. All, it's all a lot of times in life, you know, don't get me wrong. You can never, you know, not you. You can't you. You will never not stop learning. Like mm. as long as you allow yourself to. So but there's a lot of people that are on bullshit, bro. A lot of bullshit. <laughs> he keeps it a real egg kicking game. This is this is like an example of trill for y'all. If you don't know what trill is, go look it up and then come back and watch this clip. And you'll understand he gave you game and kept yeah, yeah. it real. That was hard, man. Yeah. Um, all right, so what's your favorite type of beat to to rap on or to get on? I'm so I feel like I'm so versatile, but I feel I like beats that like you turn it on and they got maybe a little like um like vocal on there, mm-hmm. like something like you can feel it like really like talking to you, like it's deep, like it could be, you know, uh, I don't know what exact beat type it would be called but something like that like you you turn it on it's like almost like uh the song song cry beat or uh okay, uh one okay. blood or okay. you know like i don't know like no, i got it's got like a nothing, maybe a sample in there that's yeah, got something saying like something, something yeah that's driving it. Uh-huh. okay 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 yeah that just like influences it like so influences the flavor yeah. what's a what rapper or mc or artist um has inspired your style the most you think and I'm sure there's a lot that have come along, you know, because we're, we're 18 projects deep now, so I'm sure you've seen a lot of artists come and go. So who do you think has had the most lasting impression on you? Mm, that's tough, but I'll probably go back with my roots, like my, my big brother and big cousin. Like, uh, really, they, like, I don't really feel like I'm um, really like anyone. So, like, I kind of... Like learning my, uh, I'm learning my, uh, I have, I'm building my identity as I go okay. in a sense, you know. So, but that's tough, bro. I don't know Eminem, I guess. Uh, when it comes to like rap, lyrical shit, okay. like Eminem, but I don't know. That's kind of a that's a tough one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, it especially can go so many different ways. You, you know, you have a, you do have Come a very sound. versatile yeah. sound in in. in I mean, and I like I like I like exploring things too, like trying new things is in like yes. yeah. So you, I wouldn't even say you have a lot of experimental joints, but you do have a very versatile range mm-hmm. of, of uh, music, though. Yeah. So and, and you would after again eighteen projects, y'all. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So a bit of a tangent from rap or music, like how do you approach your style and fashion? What's your, what's your you know what I mean? What's your recipe for getting, you know, getting sauced up? Uh, for real, like just on some, uh, you know, me personally, like if I if I were to, I'd just be on some like dope boy, like uh, like a grit fit every day, like a like a jumpsuit, you know, yeah, some yeah. J's or you know, just laid back, bro, like just comfortable, you know. That's that's really, you know, for real. I just do my own thing. I've never really been into like fashion like that. Like I've okay. always had my own. Like coming up, I never really cared about none of that, bro. As long as I was getting to it behind closed doors, 
I was all right. Hey, but but I, I mean, look, we're not parking watching, okay? But mm-hmm. the chain is nice. The, the jacket is nice. The hat is matching. I mean, it was the first thing I noticed when I walked in. Like, okay, he got the, the coat with the yeah, collar. Yeah, it's, okay. all, it's all coordinated. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He came through. So I'm, I'm I'm getting better with that, too. My my big bro, they always got something to say about what he says. I'm definitely – my brother, my big brother, he's the one that's really got, you know, he's got his drip down packed. So I guess I I guess I get some tips from Take him. Take some advice there. Yeah, from him, yeah. <laughs> Long, say it nicely, though. Say it nicely. <laughs> so – all right, now I heard you uh, You did a um, top five gangster rappers with L's, right? Shout out to L's, Emerald yeah. Dreams Lab. You know what I'm saying? That's the team. Um, you mentioned Jada Kiss as your top five uh, gangster rapper. And I just, one thing I wanted to ask on that was like, coming from KC, it was interesting to hear someone mention Jada Kiss being a New York cat. So, um, I wanted to just, if you could like touch on that a little bit, like what about what about Jada Kiss draws you to him? I just like the old school sound for real, like just that the 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 bars, the you know the griminess, the you know uh, the the wicked uh, you know flows, uh, uh, delivery, all that, bro. And it like I said goes goes back to you know my upbringing and being around my big brother and cousin, and you know like they. They kind of gave me that taste. Like, I, I, I didn't really, I never was into, like, the new age. I, I always liked the old, you know, older age, you know. So, yeah, he hip-hop. old head. <laughs> yeah, in a sense, yeah, for sure, you know. And that, that's what, I think ways, that's though. what struck me, though. Like, mm-hmm. and I don't I don't want to push no old head, young head type of thing. It's all music, really, you know what I mean? And hip-hop is forever, so it's for the kids, right, and the adults. But. It was just interesting to like, yo, this is a younger cat, and he's really referencing, you know, for me, an older cat, 90s era uh, hip hop dude, and a New York cat, like not KC. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask is like, what is gangster to you? And, you know, I know that's a, a two part, right? Like, in real life. You're talking about gang- mu- musically or real life? But that's what I'm saying. I want both of those. I real want life? Both. Real life, gangster is. A man that stands by his word, you know, that that uh, holds his principles high, you know, takes care of his family, wakes up every morning, gets it done, no matter what's in his way, you know, he lives by a code and he don't break that code for nobody. You know, and you don't got to be a gangster and being you don't got to be in the streets. You could you could be a, a father that wakes up every day and does his job. And, and if something comes in, uh, tr- tries to affect his family in a negative way, he's on it. You know, that's gangster. You know, somebody that provides for his family, no matter the circumstances, that'll take, you know, less food on his plate to spread it around to people that really matter. That's gangster. You know, okay. Okay. gangster. uh you From know, music standpoint. the music standpoint is uh, literally someone that, you know, uh, you know, in a sense, the same thing. Somebody that's honest, somebody that's uh, themselves that do- doesn't try to, uh, you know, change up or sell out because of, you know, uh, money in a sense. You know, somebody that's honest with themselves, someone that uh, carries that, you know, uh, that gratitude of, you know, what they've been through and just, you know, that's gangster to me. That's uh somebody that's just real about, you know, what's going on. Yeah, they might talk about something, but they know about that at the same time. They ain't uh, trying to be somebody they're not, you know. So authenticity. Authenticity, bro. That's gangster. You know, that's gangster, bro. Okay. You, you know, I mean, that's, that, that's another thing that I find refreshing. I don't want to use the word surprising because that's not the right word. I find it refreshing and I think it's awesome in the sense that, you know, we're in KC, and in this case, we're talking hip hop. Mm-hmm. Like music in general is 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 really the big thing in, in content creation. But you come from a hip hop world, and I think it's dope and it's refreshing to be able to see that from a younger cat like yourself, a Latin cat like yourself, and that and that doesn't mean anything. Like Latin and, and black is hip hop is all day, so let's not even go there. But also to be from again KC from the Midwest and have that that type of authentic energy. That's different. That's different, y'all. I'm just I'm just gonna point that out while we're here. Um, so let me let me say one more thing on that. Yes, though. sir. Absolutely. Uh, like 
gangster is it's deeper than you know what people think like it's just like i like i said staying solid it ain't the, the you know the the jewels and everything is like um you know the money and stuff and the industry is all blown out like money don't make you real like money don't make you gangster like you know money that's so it's just this instagram world and this social media world bro is fugazi and and it's really watered down and it pisses me off every day like when i see some you know no hate and shit but when you know you can look at somebody and you know motherfuckers are just eating off of you know the light that they have off of social media fabricating the life that they don't live or a mm -hmm. life that they they're not you know to for likes for you know you know double taps you know that's I don't know. I just want to say that, bro. Money don't make you real. I don't care. Like like Meek said, money don't make you real. I don't care if it's 100 mil. Like, people are fugazi out here, and people people will switch up. Like, real gangster is standing behind your brother when when you might not make it. Mm. You might not win. You know what I'm saying? You right. you will lose. You rolling know? with that risk. You know, anyway. rolling with them punches. That's yeah. gangster. You know? Hey. Nah, bro. That Speak your peace, man. Stand on it. I appreciate that. That's what's yeah. up. Now, you know what? I had it. I had it listed for later, but I want to jump into something real quick because you had mentioned social media, and that, it's funny shit. My arm hurts from all this salt he's sprinkling, y'all. But yo, like, what would you do if, if if social media went away tomorrow? If social media went away tomorrow, I would get based on music. I'd get straight to it, like old school, which is how I came up, anyways. Flower, uh, flyers, you know, uh, hard disc CDs, like, mm, I really mm. put in the footwork, which we already do, you know, stickers and all that, but that's what I do, but in a sense, you know, social media is a good thing in a sense of that, but it's also a bad thing because, you know, these, you know, it, it gets keep people caught up, mm, but it mm. can also take people to the next level, so... You know, if I, I tell people all the time, if I didn't do music, I wouldn't be on social media. Right. I would right. be a ghost right. because it's just smarter. What's That's the, the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I do this music thing and, and, and social media is at the high, highest it's ever been, you right. know, and it's only going in the, you know, people are getting paid off this now. So it's it's only getting larger, you know. So what keeps you doing music? What, what um, you know, what, what's your... What's the where's the passion coming from? Uh just my life. You know, uh you know, it's just kinda like um a stress reliever, you know, it's mm. kinda like, you know, um I just really it's kinda like a diary, you know, and being able to put my pain in or put, you know, whatever facts, uh, you know, uplift people or, you know, whatever, just give these drop these jewels and, and, and be able to possibly it possibly take off and go to the next level is just kind of like it's uh exciting to me mm. you know like and just that that hope or that whatever like dang this could really impact a lot of people for me being me you know like you know a lot of people you know don't get that but the real ones do like mm. the core my core fan base really understands me at this point so you know just you know, just the the drive, like I, you know, wake up every morning, it's just that constant drive, you know. Like I got to put something out. Yeah. Or I, I got yeah. something. It's I, got, I got something for the world to see, you know. Yeah. So someone's going to respect it. Somebody's going to recognize it. And it's, it's only going to get b bigger, you and know. And better. Yeah, and better. I mean, for me, and, and, and I don't, I think every time I've interviewed you, well, I've only interviewed you twice now. And it's been great every time. And I always like to tell folks, like, I have actually, I don't know if I've listened to all 18 projects, but I remember all the way back to Golden Boy. Yeah. Um, I just love the fact that, like, for me, it's a hipster moment. Like, yo, I remember. That's an artifact. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to go dig that shit out that so I can like get it signed. One, bro. That okay, like, uh, okay. I thought it was pretty early in. I was probably 14, 15 when I released Yeah, that. yeah. Crazy, you know? crazy. But, yeah. um, and that's why I wanted to talk about the passion and, and how long you've been at it because that per that persistency is is key right like a lot of people talk about consistency and i saw a post or something that said persistency is being consistent through the troubles and the, the tribulations yeah i saw that too today and that yeah. i think that's that really rings to like the spirit of the energy you give off like yo i don't give a fuck i'm here no matter what yeah okay all right, all right stamped that's... bro <laughs> you gotta leave you gotta leave and it's and i'm always myself too so if anybody mm. says anything negative it's like bro i always gave you myself you mm. know, so 
people be mad at that because people can't be themselves. You know, they, they're the uh, one moment they're this and when the next moment they're that. No, I'm always me. What I give to the world is what I am. So, you know, accept me or don't, you know. Don't matter. He's going to be know, fly either I'm way. I'm be myself, you know. Period. So what, what's been your most memorable, pro, uh, memorable project to date? Probably, uh, bro. I mean, my my recent ones. Uh, so uh, Immortal and Hope and Hustle. Those are like my biggest ones where it's like really been like I could see like this. This is like is well put together. It's it's well you know represented, and and it has a lot of potential. Those are my most you know I I, I win some places off those. I you know okay. I did a lot of well promote promotion behind those but back when i first was getting my feet wet like those like before i really was into money before i really was in, in into anything besides sports you know i would trap myself in a room and and i'd knock out like five six songs bro in a night you know <laughs> but that was back then like even we're talking about like mixtapes like i wasn't mm -hmm. buying beats at the time like i was like strictly illegally downloading youtube <laughs> like but i was going to work and like I'm 12, 13, 14, 15, and I'm I'm working my ass off for hours, and I'm I'm, I'm really on some rap shit. Then right, I'm not really right. talking about no money or nothing. I'm just like on some bars, you know, like similes, metaphors, you know. Ooh. And uh, yeah, bro, that I, I look back at those times, I'm like, dang, we really came a long way. Like, really came a long way, you know. So. All right, man, hold on, because my man said similes and metaphors, so that's some technical shit there. Yeah, right, definitely ATK technical plan. back then, yeah. So how would you, I mean, you, you obviously are looking for longevity. You're looking to be here for a long time, not just a good time. How would you describe the um, transition in, in, in rap um, in your time? Um, It's just about learning, you know, uh, so I'm like learning as I'm going, like I'm transitioning into like a man first and foremost. Right. So that like, like I'm learning things as I go to like, I, I, I'm not rapping about what I was back then now because like I'm, I'm living a whole different, I didn't really know much back then. Right. Like right. now, back then I might, uh, you know, and I still will, but I might've like, um, talking lovey dovey like puppy dog love like it's perfect but now it's like you know a little more about you know intentions and you know yeah. like there's a lot of bad stuff out here bro it's dangerous so you kind of i just rolling with the punches learning lear learning as i'm going and uh you know that's definitely helping me mold uh my identity and uh my artistry mm. you know and you did say that you, you're really good at being adaptive so i mean i just this falls right into your wheelhouse, yeah. this roll with the punches transition. Yeah. Okay, all right. So walk us through your your creative process. Now, actually, first, before before we go into that, like, are you are you pen and pad or are you uh, off the phone when it comes to writing? Uh, Coming up, I was pen and pad because that's literally what I looked up to, right. my brothers and them, saw. you know, yeah. and it was that old school, like, they going to talk shit if you pull out a phone. Uh, okay. But now that I'm so in motion and I got a phone always, I'm on the phone. You know, I'm not, I don't, you know, sometimes I might not even have a pen. You know, I run through pens like lighters. Like yeah, shit man. always comes up missing. But, you know, I write a lot, bro, when it comes to, uh, you know, on the phone. Like I always find myself, you know, when I'm, uh, you know, on a plane or something, I always start writing. So. Yeah. So what's your what's your creative process like? I mean, what what comes first, the beat or the lyric? It goes both ways, but um I think in the past it was more so the lyric, okay. you know. Okay. But now in you know today's time, probably the beat, bro. Like I got to go in and when I'm shopping or whatever like I I go, I'll probably yeah. go with the beat first and then based on that, I go with how I'm feeling. You know, and then, you know, it's it it can be, it can range. Like sometimes I might lock myself in and I might record, or I might uh, write a whole song. But you know, I'm so busy doing mm -hmm. things. Like sometimes my creative process is it'll be, you know, like two, three a month before I finish the song. You know, right, in a sense, okay, okay. completely. And then I get in the studio and I do something, and then I'll be like, oh, I still gotta mess with this. So, like. 
the song that I'm about to drop, Still Trapping Out the Back Door, I think that's been, Ooh, that's okay. been, that's been a a good time coming. Like, I'm, my stuff is all pushed back, like, five, six months. Okay. You know, okay, all so of my stuff, like, you is know. That, is that because you just, you it's take just, that time or it didn't sound right and you wanted to do something else? Or, um, or it's more of, it it's right? more of just like a timing thing. Like, I don't want to oversaturate and I want to keep it, like, going, but it's kind of, it's kind of hard to like pick that because right. you know it's like I want to push like I push still winning it's uh mm-hmm. it's going it's still going up but it's like I don't know it's kind of hard I don't want to release something and then take the eyes off of that right and right. it's just kind of you know and that's where you know uh you know that's where I get like tips from L's or you know whoever that can help me make those decisions you know those critical thinking decisions but and see now that goes that. That speaks to the many hats that this gentleman wears, and and I'm just going to speak directly to the camera here, to the mic. Like, um, if you are going to take on this 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 journey, this this passion, hold the torch of being an artist, there's going to come multiple times where you have to be more than just the artist, right? And there's going to be analytics. There's going to be some intelligence and consultation involved. You're going to have to sit and study and figure shit out, right? And then. On top of that, you have to make critical decisions for yourself. Like, yo, do I do I do I release this project? Do I take this time and invest this money into this particular project? Like, yeah. this is the one. So, with all that said, okay, now I'm looking at him now. Like, so, do you? How how do you d- choose or decide? You know what I mean? Does it go off of the energy? Like, yo, that song this is the record you know what i mean are you are you waiting for the reaction that comes back how how do you how do you approach that anymore it's kind of like off tops i release something and we're doing the whole we're doing the same recipe for every song in a sense okay. that's that's my original thought but then as it goes it's like okay i'm getting more impact on this i'm getting you know more uh you know uh participation from the fans in this like so it kind of you freestyle it to a point but when it comes to like, you know, stopping, like when to stop, when to start, it's kind of just really off of, you know, your feeling and to me, you know, my feeling and how I, you know, because all of my things, like I tell people all the time, like, you know, there's so many sounds out here, like mm. you might not like it, but someone else does. Mm. And there's millions of people in the world, you know, so don't get discouraged off like, you know what Kansas city thinks or, you know, what, you know, this person thinks cause this person loves it, you know? So rock with that. Yeah. Like, you just rock, Yeah. And you just keep connecting with those people. And that's what I'm building up. Like I, I've got to the point where my fan base is pretty, you know, it's getting there, you know, it's, it's not, you know, but I'm what sets me apart and what keeps me alive is my hustle. You know, I always just keep on applying pressure and I keep it in their face. Like, you know, you just keep on building Man, it up. Your, your confidence is is through the roof. Like that feeds your hustle. Well, I, I almost wonder if your hustle feeds your confidence or the confidence feeds the hustle. But man, like every time I look up, you're pushing another thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, who's your sports team? Like, who, wh- which team is the team for you? The Chiefs. Okay, that that's what it is. Of okay. course. So, Chiefs or the Royals? You going Chiefs? Yeah, for sure. Like, right. uh, I think that's most of the city, really. Like, the Chiefs are, like, so, you know, even before I'm talking, I was born in 96, so I've always been, like, a diehard Chiefs fan. Like, so we went through some tough years, <laughs> tough years, bro, 2-14, I think 3-13. and 13. Like, we were 13-3 and three in 2003, though, and we were supposed to win the Super Bowl. Man. And I – uh. I remember we lost in the first round to the Indianapolis Colts and uh, Peyton Manning. So uh, that ever since then, I kind of had a strong hate for Peyton Manning. But we had a lot of years like that. He's earned it, though. So. We, had, we, had a, we had a lot of years like that, bro. And it's I remember we lost in the first round. Uh, I think it was wild card versus the Dallas Cowboys. And we lost. We missed a field goal or something. Yeah. And I remember crying and uh, crying <laughs> deep because I was die hard, bro. I was die hard, and that was before we started, you know, winning. You so know? yeah, I'm gonna say like the to be a Chiefs fan back then, you know, you, you really had a to lot go of wear and shit. tear. Yeah, you had to go through your shit, and y'all had some early early ejections, like yeah, you know, shit was supposed but to even, peak. And then boom. Even back then, though, like 
we've been known for having the loudest stadium. Like we've mm. had that presence. Like our fans have been here. It just seems like number one, we're like the Patriots now. Like everyone hates us. You know uh. what I'm saying? Patriots had such a dynasty. Like we are literally we gotta get a bowl this year and we're but people hate on us so much like people used to hate on Tom Brady. Like that's now, how they hate on us. Isn't that Pat. crazy though? Because it was no Switched. hate in in me like Less than three years, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah. fuck the Chiefs. And yeah, shit. because that comes with the territory. You When you're the alpha, bro, like, that's hey. what I'm saying. When you see, you know, like, people with me, like, I've been doing what I'm doing. I got a lot of hate it's because people, like, are just, they're jealous. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, damn, like. He ain't going nowhere. Territory, yeah. He ain't going Same nowhere. With the Chiefs, you know, they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> like, we'll be here for years to come. Like, now, it is speaking, what it is. Of, speaking of Chiefs not going nowhere, um, I was on uh, – my town topic segment and I don't know that it's going to happen, but a lot of, a couple of other teams have had to do the name change, things like that. Right. So what, what's your thoughts on chiefs and the name change? If that comes up, I think there we're past that at this stage. Cause I was thinking that a couple years ago too, and the Redskins had to change their name mm-hmm. to the commanders, which whatever, but, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying about that. I'm saying like the commanders, why name the team, the fucking commanders, <laughs> like that shit don't even sound right. But the Chiefs, bro, that same thing with, like, a location change, bro. Like, mm. that would piss so many people off if we moved to Kansas. Like, why? Like, bro, why? Don't even play with, don't even play with it like that, bro. <laughs> same thing with the name. Like, the Chiefs, like, it kind of pissed a lot of people off with the, uh, I don't know if it's Gia or Gia, Gia Field now or Gia Field. Yeah, G- Gia. At yeah. Arrowhead Stadium, yeah. you know. We're Arrowhead Stadium. The real fans know we're Arrowhead Stadium. This is Arrowhead. But I guess it was money involved. And it had some, you know, whatever. So It's still but those, Arrowhead. Yeah, those new seats they got there, though, are trash. Whoever Uh-oh. signed that deal. Uh-oh. And I'm not the only fan that will say that, bro. Like, the old fa- the old seats there you could hit. That's why we got Loudest. we were so loud. Uh-oh. But the new fa- new seats, bro, they're so weak. Yo. You hit them, beer's flying. Inside you can't even job, do it. yo. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fucking. Trying to get the record off, it's, man. it's fucked up, literally. Damn. All right, so what's been the best part of your, your, your hustle or your career so far? Um, The shows, bro. Like, mm. don't get me wrong. Some shows, like, you know, or whatever, but it's all, it's, I, I always perform, like, get my heart out there, but there's been, like, the shows when you really have an impact on the people and, like, you can tell, like, damn they they rocking with this like the shows and then just the traveling and meeting new people like Mm -hmm. you know the whole process of it like the professionalism with all my releases like it's all hand to hand bro and it it, like i said it it for it molds my identity in Mm -hmm. this you know as being just a hustler bro independent you know so what's been the worst part of your 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 hustle or your career so far The, the, mm, the litter, you know, the, the brick walls that you hit sometimes where it's like, damn, Mm, this mm. didn't get the impact that I wanted to. But like, you know, that kind of fuels a fire too, in a sense, like I I have a problem, like not even in minute, like in, not in this sense, admitting when I'm beat, but you know, like. I don't quit. So it's like that just gives me fuel. Like if somebody, you know, a a hater or something, you know, whatever, that just kind of like fuels me. That kind of like gives me a reason to like, let me put in your face some more because, you know, this shit ain't going to stop. Like, you know, like it's personal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah, I would say that just like kind of like the brick, the brick walls that you hit, the forks in the road. But that's life. Right. You know, some people you can either fold and crumble or you can get back up, you know. All right, all right. Yeah. So either way, it's still inspiring. It's just, like, yeah, you're still it's, a, pushing. it's a drive, bro. It's a, it's a, you know, it's just a fight, bro. You got to keep swimming. And you, you seem to take a lesson in everything. Like you don't ever have a, you don't really take a loss. You just learn. Yeah, I mean, you got to, you got to, you know. Sometimes you fall off though, but you master yourself and you master. And I haven't, you know. Sometimes you might think you have, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. life will smack you in the face and be like, damn. Try that really, again. you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, <laughs> but you just keep going, bro. You just uh, learn, you know, apply right. yourself, you know. All right, that's what's up. That's what's yeah. up, man. So, what's the most? What's, who's all right? Not not what? Who's been the most inspiring athlete to you so far? Kobe. 
Kobe. Kobe Bryant. I say Kobe because, you know, um, that's always been my favorite basketball player. But okay. I've always heard good about him. Like, he's just a, you know, he's a workaholic. He He's never had enough. You know, he's always working. He's always putting in that work to get there. You know, it's not about the fame. It's not about the money. It's literally, you know, about proving to the world or proving to himself, like, it's that's that's just hunger and that's gangster like I was saying mm. earlier that's mm. gangster that's strength <laughs> that's you know called, what I'm saying that's a callback y'all that's <laughs> that's literally you know that fight that's that dog uh, you know that's powerful you watch highlights on him you like when uh Matt Barnes uh threw the ball or flinched the ball at him and he don't make a move I don't know if you've seen yeah, that I've video seen that, but yeah, yeah. It's, it says a lot come on that's <laughs> that's gangster bro that's gangster or the new clip going out where he uh he uh, gives that that smash on uh, on Pau Gasol. I it, I think I've seen that yeah, too. I've well, seen a bunch of. Kobe I see, I've shit. been yeah. It was it was like a, a trailer that I saw for uh, some special coming out. And it was mm-hmm. like yeah, he's about he's gonna yeah, he's smash a monster, bro. He don't care. Yeah, he don't he's care. a monster. So, I right, so where where do you prefer to listen to your music? Whether you know what I mean, and I, and I don't mean like your music specifically, but just any music, whether it's yours or whatever. You know, do you the house, the car. Um, you know, in the studio, what's your preferred place to to listen to music and jam out? Road trips, mm. like long drives, bro. Like it kind of like I'm so always so fast paced and always moving. When I finally get like go on a road trip, it kind of like also talks. You have the best talks on road trips. Like mm. that's like great talks. But m- listen to music. Like I'll turn on an album, maybe an album I never heard, and really like. Or really never really paid attention. Like I heard it, but you listen to it from yeah. top to bottom. It's like, dang, right? You this is beautiful. You know way. what I'm saying? It's beautiful, yeah. And then like that just adds, you know, the the, the beautifulness of life when you're you know driving and mm-hmm. all you see is just land and you're listening to some music. It's like I'm cruising, bro. I ain't trying to, you know, I'm just relaxed, thinking about the next move. But at the same time, like, let me just take it all in. Hey, y'all want to know what's gangster? Getting a gangster to say beautiful. <laughs> <That was me. laughs> hey man, so all right. I just got a couple more questions, man. I appreciate your time. Um, so Jays, LeBrons, or Wands? Uh I'm gonna have to go with retro Jordans, ret- mm-hmm. retro Jays. Um yeah, definitely that's just more like LeBrons, uh I'd wear like hooping, you know, um playing basketball. Um, one's definitely popular, like, Mm -hmm. this is retro too, but I've never really been the biggest, uh, fan on ones. They're more popular than, you know, they're the probably most popular retros out right now, but I don't know, bro. Uh, uh, you know, Rod, you know, overall retros, you know, I don't know, man. Ones be, ones don't fit in every scenario for me. They don't, they don't hit with every, every outfit, but you Mm -hmm. know, you know, it's whatever. All right. So. Would you now? You were talking about um, you move at a fast pace. So, what's the fastest you've ever driven a car? Now, I'm not saying in a fast pace like driving. I'm talking about like <laughs> I'm always moving. Like I can't sit down. Like I'm like always like right, you focus on something. You yeah, I'm in motion. motion. Yeah, like okay, I'm okay. getting my bag. I'm move, moving. <laughs> I don't really do fast cars, bro. I'm I'm in the slow lane cruising. <laughs> like I don't I don't. I don't really do fast, but I have uh, in the vet. I've got up to, uh, I guess, in the truck too. Uh, um, probably like one ten. Okay, are uh, you floating? You yeah, floating. one ten. But that's scary, bro. Yeah. You get to that point, that's scary. Yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. that's scary, bro. You get that lift. But yeah, I ain't with that. I I can't. Women, I can't ride with the um, women are the best at driving fucking fast. Like they drive crazy, and I, yeah. I don't know why though. I can't do that, bro. So what's do you got a you got a fantasy car like that 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 one joint that you you just gotta have? Um, not necessarily in a sense because like I'm a I don't know. I was uh I don't know, uh I wanna get a uh Stingray, a Corvette. Okay. I wanna get a Corvette Stingray, but there's a lot like like we don't even know much being from Kansas City about Ferraris and Lamborghinis, but to capture something like that yeah, hey. Yeah. yeah, but my happiness would probably come more from like uh, like uh, 
a home, like a beautiful Ooh, home, and like okay. just the stuff in the home and stuff like see, that. See, my man also mafia type yeah. shit. Now, hold on, we not gonna give him no Rico. I'm mm-hmm. just saying, he got <laughs> some of that that taste. Yeah. So hey, man, I appreciate the hell out of you, man. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I, I guess the one thing I want to ask, bro, on the way out, man, you got multiple projects coming. Um, you've been dropping multiple projects. We're on um, like album or release number eighteen. Um, when it's all said and done, and hopefully, you know, we, we got a long, long time to go. What's what's something that you want to be remembered by? What what's the 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 way that you want us to think of Zajic when it's all over? Staying true to my word, you know, um, being solid, you know, uh, being myself, uh, you know, uh, one of those dudes that you know. Uh, Always got to the money and never crossed nobody out and did no snake shit to get to the money. You know, somebody that, you know, held you down and uh, loved you as a brother and uh, always held that high until the casket dropped. That's me. There it is. Nothing but gems all the way through, y'all. Man, I appreciate the hell out of you, man. It's your boy Bump Jonas. And I just sat with... Two phone tones, Ajik. Hey, there yeah. it is, man. Y'all just had another moment here. We at the Emerald Dreams Lab. Just like I started off, I got to end it off letting you know, if you're trying to get your dreams made, you're trying to get your content out there, you need to get viral or anything else, come over here to Emerald Dreams Lab. Emerald Dream Lab. They'll get you right. They'll get you right. Yep. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Hell of a time. Yes, sir. I appreciate Y'all you, have too. have a good one. Peace.